what are the choices the legislature faces right now? Um, well, I only see one, <laughs> one clear choice. Um, they could decide to just put a little bit of money into primary care. It's not going to eliminate the cost shifting that happens in our healthcare system um, because people are going to still show up at the hospital door with emergencies. So we won't be able to get rid of our CAP program, our indigent care programs. We'll still be paying those costs. The the you know just a traditional Medicaid expansion, just put more people into the Medicaid program as it is. That's another option. Um, I don't think anyone is really interested in that option, and I think everyone wants to see us have more ways to control the costs through managed care going forward. So the third option, and I think the one that makes sense for Idaho, is to divide a benefit plan that incentivizes healthy behaviors, that gets people preventive coverage, and that's also there to cover those emergencies, surgeries, and things that we know people will still have and that we'll be on the hook for as taxpayers and as healthcare consumers if we don't find other ways to pay for them. There are a number of states who have come up with their own waivers, um, their own unique ways of delivering care, and, and we can look at those. We can look at how we incentivize healthy behavior, incentivize getting to your doctor for, for preventive care, and then, and then the co-pays that can disincentivize you know, going to the ER instead of your primary care doctor, especially for folks who haven't had coverage before and haven't, don't have a practice or knowledge about where you go to seek care in different types of circumstances. So I, I, there is actual, actually quite a bit of flexibility in what we can do as a state, and there are things that we can do even without a waiver. So we can do managed we can we can probably do a managed care program for these people and move away from fee for service, um, and then unload some of the risk onto you know a private provider of a managed care plan, and and see um, and see the kind of cost controls that we've been able to do in our Medicaid program already. Speaking of that, I see almost a dual mission for some of the people on this committee. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they they want to find some coverage, and I'm not sure what that's going to be, but they also want to see the costs come down. Mm -hmm. and, that comes up more and more. I heard uh, Senator Thane speak about it. Could you address that? Yeah, I, th I think if we don't take advantage of the dollars that are there for Idaho and provide actual coverage, it's gonna be very hard to realize any cost savings in our system. The amount of money we could, as a state alone, put into just primary care, um, I, d I don't see how it could, could make that much of a difference. We've already seen that you know, our, current, our current system where we just pay for emergencies, we can you know, help about less than 4,000 people a year um, without taking advantage of those, of those dollars that are set aside for Idaho. I, I don't see how we get there. I don't see how we eliminate the CAT fund and our indigent programs. So the options you discussed, how many people are we helping? Um, we, can, we can provide coverage for 117,000 people. Now, those, who those people are is changing every day. So I think every, people think there's a list of people out there that would qualify that changes every day as people get new jobs um, or face a layoff and have to go out there and hustle and find, and find their next job. Um, so it's about 117,000 people who would be able to be covered in this state-run plan. That includes 78,000 people in the gap who have no options right now, who if they go to the healthcare exchange, they're told they are too little to qualify for assistance. Thank you.